Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Hi, Governor Whitmer pitches her plans as she heads into an election year. We showed the world we have the tools, we move fast, and we work together. Fresh off a of victory with a $7 billion investment from General Motors, the governor addressing everything from tax cuts and inflation to boosting state education funding. Because of COVID, the state of the state was done remotely for the second straight year. However, this year, Governor Whitmer took her show on the road to Detroit Diesel to give her address. Mara McDonald live in Redford Township tonight. And Mara being remote, I guess, means it's a far more streamlined experience, isn't it? <laughs> a 26 minute experience, Devin. That's how long the speech was tonight. And she really concentrated on pocketbook issues. Let me show you. The address may have been made remote because of COVID, but the virus was an afterthought tonight, with the exception of Whitmer coming out and saying kids need to be in classrooms. I want to be crystal clear. Students belong in school. The bulk of the address dealt with accomplishments like that big GM investment announced just yesterday. Historically, the knock on Michigan was that we didn't have the tools to compete with other states. We moved too slowly and state government was dysfunctional. Yesterday, the world saw what we can accomplish. The governor heading into 2022 is pitching a pension tax repeal, boosting the earned income tax credit, as well as already giving Michigan drivers $400 checks as part of auto insurance reform. Those checks should arrive by May 9th. She may not have spent time on the state's current COVID situation and response, but the GOP led legislature makes no bones about how they feel about her performance. We got here because it's ineffective and tone deaf leadership, both in Washington and the governor's mansion allowed Michigan to be controlled by the COVID-19 pandemic and invalidated our fellow citizens' sensibilities. Back here live. So interestingly enough, uh, Shirky had many things to say before the governor's speech. And part of her speech really dealt with the issue of bipartisanship and really valuing that, you know, in Lansing, they can get things done. And they may on certain issues, but I would not characterize that relationship between the governor of the legislature as a friendly one. I'd call it pretty frosty. We're live in Redford Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. On a frosty night. All right, Mara, and that was one of the things that I wanted to talk to the governor about. After this evening's address, I sat down for a conversation with her and asked her about trying to move the ball down the field in what is expected to be a fierce election year, which can sometimes clog the incentives for winning and losing. You know what? The people of Michigan, they don't give a rip that it's an election year. They expect us to get the job done. They expect us to find common ground. They expect us to keep investing in our kids' schools and fixing the damn roads. Doing the right thing is good politics. More of my conversation with the governor after her State of the State address coming up tomorrow on Local 4 News at 5. Okay, temperatures again dropping into the single digits across Metro Detroit. Paul, these uh, dangerously cold conditions have been pretty much the story all week. Yeah, it's getting a little obnoxious out there. I'll tell you what, Kim, I mean, with the clear skies and light wind, temperatures are really cratering. We're already down to four now at Metro Airports, 10 in Taylor, 8 in Livonia, 7 in West Bloomfield, down in our south zone. Look at this, zero, Goose Egg, Deerfield, Adrian, it's one degree right now in Saline, four in Dundee. In our west zone, we have two in Ann Arbor, six in Whitmore Lake and Milford, 10 at Flint. And in our north zone, it's around eight, nine degrees for most of the north zone. It's actually warmer up here than it is down in the south zone. So wind chill when you wake up tomorrow morning is going to be between zero and 10 below. It's going to be very, very cold. And then in the afternoon, even with temperatures rising into the 20s, it's going to be a windy day. So we're still going to have wind chills in the teens. But as far as weather for the kids at the bus stop, it's going to be dry. That's good news, at least dry, but it's going to, again, going to be breezy. Both bus stops, it's just going to be a cold day. Be back to talk more about these temperatures. We'll take a deep dive into that in just a few minutes. Hey, Paul, thank you. And those bitter cold conditions are responsible for causing 75 active water main breaks in the city of Detroit, including one today that shut down I-94. Our Tim Pamplin takes a closer look with the night cam. Traffic has been stopped along westbound 94 while work crews shut off the water main that sprung a leak, sent water gushing down onto the freeway. They've just salted the freeway, try and melt some of the ice. Now, it's been a tough winter so far. You may remember last week, an entire neighborhood frozen in place. And then a couple of weeks ago, up on Harper near Chalmers, a massive water main break. I spoke to a representative 
from the water board. He says it's a matter of the bitterly cold temperatures and the aging infrastructure. This scene is up on Wyoming near Schoolcraft. Fire hydrant taken out of commission and southbound Wyoming down to one lane. This was the scene during tonight's rush hour. Again, westbound 94. It was an eight inch main that gave way. I'm being told just a handful of residents without water this evening. So back out here on your marks, get set, go. Right on cue, I-94 reopens. As I mentioned, just a handful of residents without water service this evening. Detroit Water and Sewage Department gave them cases of water tonight to see them through the evening. They say they'll get this 8-inch main repaired sometime tomorrow. That is the scene along 94 with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim, now to one driver's pothole nightmare while driving on US 23 near Ann Arbor. Out of nowhere, her windshield shattered. Jason Colthorpe is live. Jason, very lucky nobody was hurt here. It certainly could have been worse, no doubt, Kim. And we've all been there as drivers in Michigan when something hits your car. If it's small, you're definitely annoyed. But if it's big, it can be a scary situation. Now imagine something hitting your car, shattering the windshield while going 75 miles an hour. It was huge. I mean, I wish... We were in shock like when it happened. Colleen Gleason is talking about the rock that hit her windshield last Saturday just after noon near Ann Arbor. She was riding with her boyfriend in their Chevy Silverado south on US 23 just past the Plymouth Road exit when a pure Michigan moment happened. The car in front of us switched lanes and hit a pothole and then this massive chunk just came like spun off their back tire and came and flung at the windshield. They were able to safely get to the side of the road, but as you look at the damage, you might wonder how. Well, yeah, it left like a four inch gap in the windshield. So there was like, there was enough to where I could stick fingers through the windshield if I wanted to. So there was broken glass all throughout the cab of the truck. Like it, it got into like our eyes, our hair, um, like it went into our drinks we had in like the console. They found a safe flight nearby in Ann Arbor and were able to quickly get the windshield fixed, but their insurance deductible was way too high to make it worth a claim. So Colleen filed a claim with the state, but she isn't holding her breath. I just think what if something worse would have happened? Who would have been held accountable then? Exactly, and if, if that's the one thing Colleen's concerned about is she hopes people don't just brush this off as, oh, well, that's driving in Michigan. What if something worse happened? I mean, can you imagine that happening with a more inexperienced driver? So that's her message to people tonight. Back to you. And Jason, she mentioned filing that claim. I've always wondered, how do you actually do that? How do you file the claim with the state? It's actually pretty easy if you go to the MDOT page at Michigan.gov. It's right there, a uh, quick form to fill out, which, like I said, that's the easy part. Getting compensated is a bit of a long shot, and the state makes that clear because the state's protected from things like this. However, if it finds a situation that's credible and they feel the, the state could have prevented this, they will investigate and you can get compensated. But again... The bottom line is when this happens to people out on the road, more likely than not, they're going to be out whatever it costs them to get this fixed. Yeah. Back to you. Such a pain, so frustrating. Okay, Jason, thanks. Now to the coronavirus, as cases uh, do appear to be dropping here in Michigan, 27,423 cases. That's a two-day total, so we're at 13,000 cases a day. But another 379 people have died from the virus. Healthcare workers in several states, including Michigan, face a deadline of tomorrow to get their first dose of the COVID vaccine if they haven't already. Also, Dr. Anthony Fauci says scientists are working to develop a universal vaccine that offers protection against any type of coronavirus. Now, an update to a story we were bringing you last night at 11. The Gross Point School Board addressing racial slurs that were said by a parent during Monday night's meeting. That mother repeatedly used the N-word while speaking during public comment, upset about her son getting in trouble for using that word on Snapchat. We were threatened, and why? Because he said <laughs> I'm sorry, this happens to be in every song, the FCC, the John Connors, the, the who's who are in charge. 
The board president released a statement reading in part, quote, we condemn this language. In fact, this only underscores the importance of our collective work set forth in our new strategic plan. Moving forward, the board says it will be removing anyone from meetings who uses inappropriate language. Well, tonight there's a new Jeopardy champion. It is the first time we have said that in 40 broadcasts. Amy Schneider's incredible run came to an end in Final Jeopardy. Over our champion, Amy Schneider, did she come up with Bangladesh? You looked at this for a long time. No response. You're going to lose $8,000. You're going to finish in second place with 19600 Roan Talzma, you are our new Jeopardy champion <laughs> with a one-day total. How about that? Amy Schneider entered Final Jeopardy. She had a lead of $9,000, but came up short when she couldn't come up with Bangladesh as the correct response. Only all-time record holder, that guy, Ken Jennings, who hosted tonight's show, had more consecutive wins than Schneider. She ends at 40. Of course, Ken Jennings had 74. She will return for the Tournament of Champions coming up this fall.